Hello, fine people of YouTube. Welcome back to Pitstain Hobbies, the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube. Um, and uh, we're getting back on the Agora uh, Leopard 2A6 main battle tank model from them. <coughs> links in the description below. Go click those links, everybody. Please click the links. I need help. No, I'm kidding. I, I need mental help. But clicking the links is fun. Either way, um, we're building this awesome thing from Agora. We're on to pack uh, pack five today, which is ooh, she's a big pack. That is pack five, yes, big pack. And uh, oh, a quick a quick uh, pre video addendum to the pack four video, um, where I said the screws were too long and they didn't let this this part of the deck lay down. Well, apparently in uh, in pack six, and one of my uh, kind viewers brought this to my attention. Thank you very much again. If you'd like a sticker, send me an email with your address, and I will send you a sticker. By the way, the stickers, for when I screw up and you catch it on the video and you call it out, you got to like, subscribe, comment, and then email me your address. I am getting Global Forever stickers from the post office. Screw it. A lot of you people are in the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. I don't care. I'm going to get expensive stamps, and anyone in the world that the U.S. Post Office First Class Mail International serves is eligible for win a, win a sticker. There we go. Um, aside from that, uh, the screws were too long. I went and went full brute force and took my Dremel to them with a stone bit. The results were perfectly fine for me. <laughs> However, in Pack 6, they do tell you to take all these screws out and put in shorter screws to resolve the issue. So they did... Figure it out. Um, that is in the pack six instructions, uh, which I then uh, I found the other night after that tip came in from my uh, YouTube comments. So there we go. Uh, that's where that is. Okay, so th this is just friggin' awesome. I didn't even notice all these little these nice little hooks they got molded in here. I mean, it's a very nice molding. I gotta say, they put some effort in uh, with the detail. So let's get uh, well, let's see what we're doing on this pack six where's all our parts here um stage 34 okay we're going to be adding some things to this i think so we're going to leave this here for now and uh oh let's see 34 35 40 34 oh i haven't cut into this guy for all the track links yet Ah, there we go. Okay. Well, let's just crack open 34 while you're here listening to me bloviate either way. I gotta stop saying bloviate. That's another guy's line. That's a Phil from Spruverse, one of my modeling uh, YouTube compatriots. I met at Wonderfest this year. Very nice guy. And uh, here we go. We got some little, uh, let's see here. Little, oh, little parts. Be careful, everybody. You know, I'm gonna drop this thing. Uh, looks like a, um, oh, Jesus, someone's going to want a sticker. Uh, uh, the barrel, uh, travel lock, kind of, I think, yeah, looks like a barrel travel lock. Okay, for when they're traveling and they want to lock the barrel, um, or transporting the tank via, you know, rail, air, other means, who knows what. And we got this little doohickey. Oh, that's metal. Nice. Not some flimsy piece of plastic there. So, uh, not a lot of parts in 34. I think, uh, hell, I might just do this live on camera. How hard could it be? You know, let's see. Barrel travel lock. And, uh, uh installed. And we put these little plastic end caps onto, uh, this little metal doohickey here. With their little pins facing downward does it matter which one which goes where oh no oh yeah they even got the the camo paint matched on this little bar that's pretty sweet there we go let's get that on there and then it looks like this kind of just sort of yeah snap it into the back there and then there we go. Slide that over. Oh, oh, shh. Nikes. I broke a piece. Son of a... This is what I get for doing things. I just snapped that piece of plastic. Let's be very careful. Ay -ay -ay Ian. You idiot. 
Where'd that little bit of plastic go? Oh, it's captured inside. I got it. Hold on. I've got it. Oh, I've completely snapped it off now. I'm just going to glue that back on. It will be fine. Nothing to see here, looky lose. Yeah, that was... That little error was all on me for not flexing that little post in enough when I was... Uh, I'm going to need some little needle nose pliers here to push this... There we go. Son of a... Ian, carefuling. There we go. Okay. And now that I've completely borked that part, and I've broken another one. All right. Huh. Well, okay. We can recover. A little crazy glue. I'll be right back. Oh, what a screw up. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I glued, glued those two tabs on that I snapped. They'll be fine. Plus, I'm also weathering this. Ah, uh, weathering. A modeler's best friend for hiding sins. Um, but yeah. So I would, uh... A, I would make sure you press these end caps on to the metal rod as much as you possibly can. And then when you go to slide this thing in, do not push back on this too hard. If you have to push on these to get them to line up with their holes, it means they're not on the rod far enough. And you should try squeezing them on a little more when it's not trying to be stuck on the tank. Um, and then I, I snap in the back and then really do your best to flex these guys in as far as you can to get them under their tabs. Um, if somebody has a better system, they think, for uh, putting that in, please let, well, please let everyone know in the comments. Um, because again, <clears throat> I don't call myself the dumbest channel for a reason. I screw stuff up pretty regularly here. I am the average person, I think. Um, well, I'm above average body weight, according to my doctor. But, uh, you know, I, I scored highly on my triglyceride test recently, and then I was told that was bad. So, who knows? Um, okay, pack 35, uh, stage 35. Ooh, got some more, more bits here for the engine deck. And some more track links. Save you for later. And, uh, yeah, this is... This is going to go underneath here for to hold in our uh, exhaust or our radiator grills, uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, plastic baggie, go bye bye. We'll be right back. We're just, I don't even know if we're putting anything in here. Let's see. Um, we're, <laughs> nope, we're done. <laughs> That's it. We don't even put anything in yet here. Uh, we need pack 36. Um, which is. Uh -huh. 38, 40, 30, 39, ah, 36. Well, that was a <laughs> okay. 35 was a quick stage, um, which is why I like that you get these bigger packs with Agora because there are some stages in a part work that are just like, you know, not many parts. <clears throat> well, I mean, 35 would take longer if you did all the track pins, you know, one of the time. <gasps> Ooh, is this is this photo etch? It's heavy too. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of photo etch in my day. It's probably all oh, the plastic baggies super thick on these too. Oh, oh dear. That is that is a very heavy duty, nicely painted and finished piece of photo etch right there. This is some of the thickest, beefiest photo etch I have ever seen, and it really does look quite nice. I'm okay. I'm Agora. I'm officially impressed with this part. This is a very nice piece of photo etch. I don't think any tankers watching this right now would care to disagree with me. Um, oh, and the camo is painted on there so nicely. It's like almost hard to see without a. Uh, that doesn't make it any easier. It's it's somewhat subtle. But, man, those look nice. So now, and these have patterns on them, which I'm assuming match up with the engine deck camo, which is freaking awesome if that's the case, which I'm pretty sure it is. Um, we're gonna, I think, oh, yeah. 
yeah, this is very clearly meant to go right. Yeah. Oh, it lines up perfectly. Wow, that is so nice. Oh, man, I'm impressed. Okay, I'm going to carefully put these in and snug them down. This is going to hold in the photo etch. And uh, I'm not doing that on camera because I don't want to mess these beautiful things up. Even though it would be very difficult to because they're, they're quite stiff. I mean, photo etch is rarely this... Um, uh, how would I... Beefy, I guess. Photo etch is usually a very delicate wisp of a thing. You sneeze the wrong way while you're holding it and it bends in half. But uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so five screws and that little plastic piece is down. And look at what we got. That looks so... I put it at an angle. You can see it a little better. The camo all matches up nice. That is sick. These are really nice. Um, <clears throat> I compared them to some uh, Tamiya uh, radiator grills from um, my other 2A6. Those are a tiny bit more detailed. They, they do have some a little bit of a feature in them where these these are just straight up mesh. But especially compared to like a Heng Long or a Tigan or a Toro, whatever the hell brand of ready to run tank, those things are just molded molded plastic, you know. And you could get extra photo etch to put on top of their molded plastic. It's just putting makeup on a pig. Um, these are very nice, very nice. Okay, worth the hype on the photo etch, my opinion. And that should be about it for stage thirty six. Other than building a few track links, watch me scrolling on my mouse. This is great. Top flight YouTube entertainment. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> so here's a 37. Here we go. Chassis tub. And a quite nice chassis tub. I like the detail. You got all that nicely done. It's all, all one color of, uh, of NATO green. And uh, I wonder if I should paint this entire thing or just flat clear it. And it'll probably be fine. I think I'm just going to flat clear it and it'll probably be more than adequate. I mean, you're not going to see the wings. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we're going to do. We don't need to paint this whole damn thing. I'm not going to do that. It's a good color already. It just needs it just needs to be uh, toned down a little with some, some flat clear and it's going to look fantastic. But that's it. Stage 37, you literally pull this out of the box. That's the instructions. And then we go over to 38 where we start getting some circuitry. Ooh, exciting. We'll be right back. Okie dokie. Our, uh, our flat clear is dried. Gave us a nice nice effect there. It looks good. Uh, the plastic's just a, a wee bit on the shiny side for me. Not that you're really going to see it. Once this thing's built, you're going to just catch a little bit of this front and back area. And uh, you're not going to see a whole lot going on in here, really, because of the side skirting covering a lot of that. And the wheels and suspension is all in the way of it. But uh, just call me OCD Ian, okay? Um, we're going to move this to safety for a bit. I mean, moving it to proper safety would be taking it away from me entirely. <laughs> but the next best thing is uh, off to the side. Take our um, chassis tub, and we got stage 38 here which is the charging board for the model and we have a little plate here okay that'll go right on there like that and this little we have a little filler panel for the bottom of the tank that'll just snap right in probably obviously we got our little charge control board here um tk cdb um i don't know there we go. But yeah, it's a power switch. So this is uh, probably, yeah, that's how you'll turn on the tank is just this power switch. AC adapter will go in here. Battery will go in one of these and uh, something else will go in the other one. We shall see. Probably it's going to just go to the main brain box um, or the, uh, the MFU, <laughs> whatever they call the, uh, their tank control board. And then we got a few screws. So let's just get this uh, get this bolted down, and we will be right back. Okay, stage 38's done. <clears throat> Our little charge control board and bracket are secured down. Um, don't over-tighten these screws on the circuit board. Just, just snug them a little at a time until this doesn't wiggle anymore. That's it. Don't want to don't wanna tempt fate. We snapped in our little bottom plate here. Um, 
Is that the escape hatch or is that... I don't know. It's like every every uh, leopard I've seen and, or touched or built has always had a thing there. Um, and maybe it's escape hatch. Well, someone will win a sticker for sure on this episode. Oh, uh, there we go. Someone will correct me in the comments. I think I already know who. Our newest uh, 2A6 tank fan on the channel. <clears throat> and we're going to move on to stage 39. And where are you? Let's see what we got here. Ooh, suspension bits. Nice, nice. Let's get their cut open. <clears throat> take our take our track links to torture ourselves with at a later time. Four boxes of track links there. This is more than uh, enough to complete this first track, by the way. By the time you've hit a uh, stage, a uh, box, God, pack five, uh, you will have enough links to make one complete track, I think. Um, I could be wrong, but I will then stand corrected or sit corrected because that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and I also sit when I read the comments correcting me. So, yeah, I will sit corrected. And we got some little suspension bits and other little doohickeys in here. Okay, we're going to start getting these together and we will return shortly. At least I didn't say be right. Ah, oh, damn it. I almost said it. Okay. So, uh, pretty cool feature going on here with this part is this track tensioner now this bit is full metal and you uh just tight you just screw that little nut onto that little shaft there are no threads in the end of this um and then we're gonna throw this thing onto here and it clicks in there nice and nice and snugly yee carefully in so we don't have to really worry about holding it in too much. Um, since it is metal, we're going to throw a tiny bit of brand one oil on that screw. Get this screwed in. It's a little bit of a tricky angle here. Let's see if we can negative. Let's see if we can. Uh, yeah. Actually, since the tub is plastic, I mean, you can you can flex her a little bit. But there we go. Not too hard. Look at me putting a screw in live on camera, not screwing it up. No sticker right now for anyone. Okay. And it goes on there. So that is, I'm, I'm tickled with this so far because it's like kind of realistically functional uh, track tension system there um, to, uh, you know, tension the front um, idler wheel there. That's pretty sweet. It's not bad. Okay. Then we got... Got a few of these little like uh, shock absorbery things. We got a number of parts here, little like wheel hubs and other little bit things. Um, these, ah, careful. Oh dear, here we go. Uh, we're just gonna save those for later. Put those in a little doggy bag, take those home, heat them in the microwave and they'll be delicious the next day. Okay, <laughs> I'm stretching with that one. I'm reaching for things. And we got some uh, basically shock absorbers, bump stops, whatever you want to call. It. And they're 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 I think they're shock absorbers. These are not not functional or anything on the model, but that's fine. We gotta slap a few of these on, like so. There we go, and just put some screws in there. So we'll get that knocked out, and we will uh, we will return shortly. Okie dokie. Our little uh, shock absorbers are bolted down. Very nice. Screwed down, whatever. Um, and then we're going to assemble these little return roller assemblies. Now, you need to tighten this screw into here just enough. If you tighten it too far, these won't turn. And these must be able to turn since the tracks run above them and they are the return rollers. Now, these are fine. What I would do personally, because I like to see the rubber tires, is I would paint the tire area, which is just, you know, everything past this little green lip on the edge here, this little section here, with some uh, Tamiya XF85 rubber black. This paint is one of my favorite paints in the entire world, because it truly does look like rubber when you paint it on there nice. Uh, you can tape this off and airbrush it, or you can hand paint it, whatever, whatever's 
uh, in your repertoire. Um, but yeah, little little XF85 rubber black. Now, that being said, this is the first part on this tank where I think there could be a little improvement. It's like it's it's not a real problem, I don't think. It won't it shouldn't be for most people. Um, most people that build Partworks models display them. Uh, they don't really do much with them. This is one of the first part works where you can drive the damn thing around. Actually, this is the only available part work outside of a couple of random tanks that uh, either Hachette or some somebody put in Japan, you know, put out in Japan of those Japanese uh, main battle tanks, which I would like to get my hands on one day. This is a this is a tank freak here. I love the tanks. Um, there could be a wear potential because there is a plastic bushing in here and. This little guy rides on the plastic bushing, and honestly, if you threw just a tiny bit of silicone grease on that plastic bushing, it's probably fine for, uh, you know, 90% of the people out there that are going to own this. If, however, you're one of the people that really wants to drive this thing fairly vigorously, um, there is an upgrade available. Now, it's it, this is not a conventional approach, off script totally, but these are return rollers from King Kong RC. I will put a link in the description to the eBay listing. I don't I've ordered from them many times, so I I personally haven't had a bad experience with them, but I make no claims as to their reliability of as a seller. So far so good. I've bought uh, many hundreds of dollars of parts from them. Um some of their one of their parts is complete no good, just no good. Um they make a chassis for a Tamiya tank. You can go back and watch my Tamiya 2A6 videos for for that debacle, but these little fellas are machined aluminum with a rubber tire and ball bearings in the shaft. Now they don't fit perfectly. Perf they don't fit perfectly into these recesses. Uh, I think when I bolt them down, when you clamp down on the nut, it'll probably pull it in properly. But if you you might need to shave just a tiny tiny bit off this housing. You'll you'll see if you get these and you try to go to put them in. Um, but I'm going to put these on my tank. These are ball bearing. They have rubber tires. And uh, if you know and if you know me and you've seen any of my tank videos, I love me some rubber tires. Um, and uh, all the road wheels have rubber tires. So why the heck not the return rollers, in my opinion? Uh, they're not cheap for these parts. I mean, this tank is not cheap. This is an expensive tank. You shouldn't need to upgrade it. You really don't. Unless you're going to be under uh, harsh operating conditions, I will put it. Um, in in such case, you might want... These are about $50 and change, plus maybe some shipping on eBay for a set of them. Uh, it's the only place I would personally order it from. There are other websites that sell them, but eh, I don't do the Alibaba, AliExpress thing. I tried ordering from a Chinese RC website once and my credit card got hacked. <laughs> Go su Big surprise there. But these are... These are quite nice. I'm going to be using these. I am going to, however, show you how to assemble and install these. Hell, I might even paint on some rubber black on these just to show you the finished effect. Um, not that you're really going to see them. Um, also, the little hubs have uh, have some nice detail that you're likely almost never going to see. That being said, I will use these little these little guys uh, for my just my own personal preference at this point. The rest of this tank, I really, I, I, I haven't found anything to hold at fault for being at all substandard or shoddy. Not at all. This, this thing's building up quite nicely. Uh, the chassis tub's fairly rigid uh, for being plastic. More rigid than Tamiya. Um, and it's, it's got a lot of strengthening ribs and other things in here. And then when you bolt everything together, that gives it all the rigidity. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to go on much longer on that. But yeah, that's... That's the return rollers. They're built. We're going to put these aside for later as well. That's 39. I'll throw you in there for now. 40. Okay. 40 more of the same is going to be more shock absorbers and uh, hub covers and uh, return rollers. So I'll get those slapped on real quick and we will return with the results. Okay, pro builder's tip right here. I like my fancy German screwdrivers. Who doesn't? Um, a lot of us that build a lot of models, we end up, you know, treating ourselves to some nice stuff. These are these are Viha screwdrivers from from Germany. 
Um, they're very nice. I like them a lot. Uh, a lot of people have the Wera. You'll see those little green rubber in-molded uh, little things in the finger area. Those are really nice, too. Um, but the screwdrivers you get with a part work, these are from our uh, our fan home DeLorean. Uh, these screwdrivers went like this. Boo! Goodbye! Want nothing to do with it. And then Agora gives us this weird little, you know, dollar store screwdriver. However, don't throw this away. You need it. Um, because here... I'm trying to get these screws in for the shock absorber and I'm fighting and this is the skinnier one this is the one I was using this is the one that fits the screw and I'm in here and you can see it's like it's it's really it's in there it's hard to get to you're banging into the circuit board well lo and behold I said Ian you're an idiot why don't you just get a shorter screwdriver well I pulled out this another German one I know it says W Germany West Germany they're brand new screwdrivers I just got them like last year but Oh my God, are they gorgeous, right? Yeah, hey cow. But uh, nope, nope. Also, also too long, as were those uh, those other yellow and black partwork screwdrivers. But this little guy fits right in there, no problemo. And you gotta—that's the angle you're working on. You gotta press nice and firm, and boom, perfect. Save the screwdriver. Anything going on inside the chassis? This is the one to use. Like, I was fighting to get these in up front a little bit, but they were fine. And these were, eh, not so bad because they, they were nice and clear, you know. But this one right here, this little son of a, that, you want this little cheap garbagey screwdriver. They include them for a reason, I suppose, sometimes. I usually just think it's because they're like, well, you know, guys building a partwork model, he must not even own screwdrivers. You know, I mean, that's a little presumptuous of them, but it is a nice thing to throw in if you don't have a screwdriver. Even if you have a whole bunch of fancy ones, save this little crappy guy here. That's my pro tip of the day. And those other two shock absorbers, they went in the back, obviously, here. Uh, this side's naked still, and that should be it for 40 i built up my other uh, return rollers and i put them in the baggie and we got the other parts here from 40 and this is just you know wheel hub covers mostly and other little thingy bobbers we're saving for a later step and our return roller units are built and that is it and now we're going on to 41 which is more little suspension bits so that's going to be the other side 41 and then why not do a preview of what we're all expecting. More little suspension bits for 42. <clears throat> it's interesting. Sometimes everything's in baggies. And then these, there are a lot of loose parts just floating around. That's, eh, whatever. Is what it is. 41 and 42, we're just gonna, we're just gonna slap those suckers together and get this pack officially in the books and done. We will be back in a sec. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Our little shock absorbers are... Ah! Carefully and... Jesus. I don't know how I do anything down here without breaking everything. Uh, we got our other return rollers uh, built up. And uh, we're just going to make them one big happy family. And put them all... Well, they even fit into one Ziploc bag. This is the $10,000 question of the hour. And... They, they do. They do. Oh, it's like packing a lunch for a fat kid. Here we go. Hey, I was a chubby kid when I was young. I'm still a chubby kid. Um, so yeah, that's that. That That's it for, um, <clears throat> that's it for pack five. So we got an awesome chassis tub. We did flat clear it. We put our bottom plate in. Now, this is a snap fit. It's a fairly good sn positive snap when it goes in. I threw just a couple dabs of crazy glue on these uh on these pins here just why not ian there'll be some reason later that crazy gluing those was a horrible idea possibly but that's what i did uh wait until the rest of the video to find out but our track tensioners are very nifty <clears throat> i like that they're they're metal they're threaded okay and uh you can adjust them that's that's pretty badass i gotta say kudos for that uh yeah there's no torsion bar suspension in this tank it's going to use little uh, little coily twisty springs in here, but that's just fine. I mean, ultimate realism, you know, you, you would have torsion bars, but nobody but Tamiya does the torsion bars. Nobody. That I'm aware of. 
again, <laughs> stickers up for grabs if I'm wrong on that too. But as far as I'm aware, uh, that that's no excuse. Ignorance is no excuse for whatever. Um, but yeah, here we go. Pretty nice. I'm, I'm, it's coming along nicely. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm very happy with it, actually. Why do I say pretty happy with it? I'm, I'm quite fond of this tank so far. Um, it's really an interesting hybrid between, like, a Tamiya model and, like, a ready-to-run Chinese tank. Um, even though it's probably most of the parts are made in China. Uh, dollars of donuts, as they say. Uh, but it's quite nice. Um, and, and again, don't throw away this cheapo little screwdriver they give you. It comes in really handy for inside of the lower chassis tub. Very nice. Okay, well, uh, that was this was a short episode. The last one was like a long one. That was like an hour, I think. Um, so even with me going on and on about things, uh, that's that. We got our rubber black paint here. Put that aside for now. And uh, there we go. So uh, yeah, if anyone really is is dying for these these whoa some tank jewelry here, um, if you really want to spend the extra fifty shekels or so plus some shipping from from uh, China, uh, these these are pretty cool. These King Kong RC return rollers. They're not an absolutely precisely absolute perfect fit, but they're a fit. I've matched them up side by side with the stockers, and they're within a millimeter. Uh, or so, and that's within the tolerances of the wiggle on on the track, because there is there is a bit, there is a bit of clearance, Clarence. There we go, and <laughs> plenty of more track links to build. I will not do that on video and torture everybody. I'm torturing you enough by just talking to you. So thank you for coming. Like, subscribe, check out the Agora models links down in the description. There's. Uh, there's awesome tank at the end of that link and many other cool models from them as well. I wish I could afford to build all of them, uh, but, uh, I'm not a retired guy with a fat government pension. You know who you are, Buck. Um, so that being said, thanks for coming. Uh, if I screwed up, remember, like, comment, subscribe, email me. It's in the description. The email's in the description. Free stickers going all over the world now. Whatever. Uh, this channel makes a whopping 30 to $40 per month. And it's all eaten up on stickers, and now it's going to be uh, in the red on buying more stamps and envelopes to send to all the people that catch me screwing up. And uh, you'd think, hey, Ian, you could just stop screwing things up, and you'll stop having to give out free stickers. Well, that's an imposs impossibility, and I might as well give out free stickers and people give good tips, because you deserve to be rewarded. With a cute little owie cloud from Pitstain Hobbies. There we go. Oh, my God. Branding. Saying my own channel name so many times makes me a little nauseous. Or maybe it was that frozen pizza I had for lunch. That might have been a bad idea. Either way, make better health decisions. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.